makes a major, major difference, especially when you're testing patients, maybe non-sedated pediatric patients, <coughs> patients who uh, uh, may be uh, moving or vocalizing during the test. In many conditions, situations, we'd say we can't test these patients, that we would have to sedate them. Well, what if we had a group of patients that you know could be calm enough to take this test? Uh, if you were to sit them there and have them watch uh, maybe a cartoon uh, without, the, uh, without the sound on, or if you were to blow bubbles or play blocks with them, they would be relatively calm. Now, the calmer, the better. Uh, though, naturally, they're not going to just lay down, go to sleep for you, and snore. Uh, <clears throat> well, how would you get away with that? How could you get away with that? Well, there is a method called Bayesian waiting that really helps in this situation. And I'm going to try to explain how Bayesian waiting works. Okay? Uh, in, a, in any ABR, or any auditory evoke potential at all. Remember, the response is the needle. In this case, maybe it's a shovel because it's a chirp, which that's a big advantage. Uh, and the residual noise, the other physiological noise going on, which overwhelms it initially, that's the haystack that we've got to get rid of. We get rid of it through averaging, okay? But in a case where the patient is uh, maybe moving, maybe vocalizing, uh, sitting up instead of lying down, etc. Then we are going to get, as we take samples of this EEG, we're going to get some of them that are, have a very good signal to noise ratio because at that particular moment the muscles are relaxed. And at another moment we might get one that has a very poor signal to noise ratio because it, uh, the, the, the muscles are now uh, contracted at that time. What muscles? Jaw muscles, neck muscles, etc. Okay, so we're taking sample, 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 sample. And in the conventional system, we set a rejection level somewhere. So, so that a sample that exceeds this particular level will not be included in the average because if it was, it would corrupt the average uh, and you'd have a combination in your final result that was response from the patient plus physiological noise and, you know, uninterpretable or d distorted. We could misinterpret it. Uh, so we have to have a rejection level. We set that relatively low, say 20, 15, 20, 25 um, um, microvolts. Certainly the response isn't that large. Those things are myogenic. Uh, and so, uh, oops, wrong way. Uh, where do I put that re uh, artifact rejection level? Well, I mean, uh, usually people leave it wherever the factory sets it. Uh, and the next thing is, every sweep is treated equal. The ones that are real good, the ones that are partially good, the ones that uh, are really terrible, but, th you know, they got a lot of noise in them, but they don't exceed the rejection level. And the ones that are over the rejection level, well, they're just rejected. Uh, but the ones that are under it, whether they are good signal-to-noise ratio, low noise, or high noise, they're all treated equal as far as their contribution to the grand average. Okay? Um, so the low noise samples are burdened by the noisy samples, and they all add equally to the average. Okay? Uh, in fact, under these conditions, uh, the residual noise during the test, instead of falling, might even be rising and is corrupted by the noise. And you say, well, we can't do this test. The test is not valid because um, the patient needs to be sedated, was not calm enough. Uh, and so these responses that are below the rejection level, 
they contribute equally to the grand average, and the ones that exceed are not, do not contribute at all. That's traditional averaging. It's just one of the things with it. This is why we say patients have to be either nice and calm, sleeping or lying calmly, or they cannot be tested without sedation. Here's a way that they could be tested without sedation. Now, I don't mean the wild kid who is uh, yanking off the electrodes and storming down the hallway. Of course not. These are the patients that you can envision can sit and play calm enough to be able to do this test, okay, within reason. Okay, so here you have the same situation, but using Bayesian weighting instead of traditional averaging. Well, first of all, we said where do we put the rejection level? Well, in the case of Bayesian weighting, we would set it much, much higher, way, way up here, maybe around 80 microvolts, or shut it off for that matter and don't reject any. Um, because we're not using rejection level as a criteria, all right? And we are going to actually use every sample. These, these are, are just the noise that's in a sample. Here's a high noise sample, here's a low noise sample. But the thing is, what we do in Bayesian weighting, <clears throat> as we collect these samples, we immediately analyze them instantly for their signal to noise ratio. And the ones that are low noise, right? they're not all treated equal. The ones with low noise are, uh, like this one, they have high, it has a high contribution, like a 90% contribution, a high weight, a high contribution to the average, okay? Because it had good signal to noise ratio. This one has poor signal to noise ratio. Well, that's still added in. It still contributes to the average, but it has less weight. Here, a 10% weight versus a 90% weight. Uh, and even the sweeps that would have been over the um, artifact rejection level, which we had to keep low in order to keep down corruption of the average, uh, even they count but much less, maybe 4%, 6%, 8%. But every single sweep counts rather than being rejected. Okay? So, basically, this scheme was chosen by Interacoustics for the Eclipse unit. Um, and there are others, like Kalman, uh, Kalman filtering, which is very, very sim similar to Bayesian weighting, but interacoustics chose Bayesian weighting because it is a solid, proven algorithm, okay? Uh, and it will allow you uh, to uh, get acceptable results, uh, even good results, on patients that otherwise could not be tested, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying, saying or trying to claim uh, that this puts an end to all sedation. If we were to claim that, that would be naive, but uh, it, it's certainly very, very useful. So in the right case, this can make a difference between, and it will make the difference between, uh, getting good results on non-sedated pediatric patients uh, versus no results at all, just all artifacts, uh, or a, uh, a waveform that can't be interpreted.